open people's freezers when no one's looking. I will sneak in their freezer to see what ice cream they hold. And I'm going to be honest with you, I judge the hell out of them. Yeah. It says a lot about who they are. Yeah. I had a relationship, and she had a pint of ice cream. I can't say what it was. And when I saw that, I said, baby, it's done. We can't do this. Swap Walked out. out. Never looked back. <laughs> your ice cream on a stick or in a sandwich or maybe somewhere in between everyone has a childhood memory of their favorite ice cream treat we're traveling the country to find out what the world of ice cream has to offer outside the classic cone or cup my first stop for treats has got to be an ice cream truck before i see what else is out there I'm going to revisit a few classics and see how they hold up. Hi. Hello. This is your ice cream truck here? Yeah. Well, how long have you been doing this? Since I was 17, nine years. So it's a family business then? Yes, my mom did it since I was, I think, like five. The ice cream man around my neighborhood, he wasn't really nice to kids, but you seem like you're a lot nicer than him. Well, I got this method that if you're nice to people, you make them laugh a little bit or something, they're going to come back again. What's your favorite ice cream dessert? Ice cream, it would be the strawberry crunch. OK. Which That's will be this, this one. one. That one's super good. Well, I guess I'm just going to keep it simple and go with the classics that I grew up with. Can I get the original bomb pop and then one of the ice cream sandwiches? But can I get the Neapolitan, The Neapolitan? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm just, I'm really excited that I'm ordering ice cream from an ice cream truck for the first time. I'm not afraid of the ice cream man. The one that I grew up with, he was mean. She's super sweet. This ice cream. All right. The Neapolitan sandwich. Thank you. And the Bob Hopper original. Thank you so much. You're welcome. See Have you. a nice day. You too. Holy moly, it's been a long time since I've had one of these, though. This is like when people say classic ice cream sandwich, this is what comes to mind. But they're still as good as I remember just unlocks that memory of hot summer day at the park, hearing whatever neighborhood jingle you're used to. And to this day, it tastes good. I mean, again, this is like, this is such a staple, I feel like, in the ice cream pop world. I mean, growing up, I was always more of the ice cream sandwich drumstick kind of guy, but some days you need one of these to quench the old thirst. I look around today and there's so many different kind of like pops and novelty ice cream bars and treats that you can get. I feel like this is kind of like the backbone. People in my generation, they grew up eating ice cream sandwiches and treats at these ice cream trucks and that inspired them to take it and do something different. But it all started with this. That was a close call. <laughs> when you're talking about ice cream truck faves, you can't forget the Choco Taco. My name is Nunzio. I've been eating ice cream for 20 years. Choco Tacos is number one. It's been a go-to of mine ever since my dad let me steal a bite of one. The Choco Taco was invented in 1983 by Alan Drazen who recognized a sugary take on the taco would make for a delicious treat. Hey. Hey. Isaac. Alan. Nice to meet you. Pleasure meeting you, too. I've grown up eating the Choco Taco my whole life. Well, nothing makes me happier. That's yeah, good. it's a, I come mean, here, here. yeah, come on, Good bring job. her in. <laughs> Please That's tell cool. me you brought some that I can eat some with we you. We did, we did. And actually, I have one special one. Oh, my god, yes. Yes, please tell me this is full of Choco Tacos, <laughs> and I hit it, and they all fall out. Now, this is amazing. And where did you get this? It was a gift. As much as I want to take a bite out of this, do you have any, like, actual tacos? I do, I do. Sweet. Thank you, man. Yeah, no oh, yes. Just seeing this is, like, bringing up my childhood. Ah, uh, yeah. 
You're a genius. That's all I got to say. <laughs> oh, my god. It's so good. And you get the chocolate and the vanilla fudge ice cream and the crunch from the shell yeah. and the nuts with, like, every bite. That's what makes it Yeah, unique. every single bite is the consistent. If you were to do a rough estimate, what number Choco Taco is this for you? So we're a little over a billion sold. How about consumed by you? Less than a billion. Less than a billion. <laughs> How did you end up in the ice cream business? So I actually started my career. I was 18 years old in college. Uh -huh. And I went to work for the Good Humor Company driving an ice cream truck. And I was very fortunate to work for a company that when I had an idea, they kind of let me run with it nice. and develop it. So, OK, I got to ask you, how did you even think of it? I was at my desk one day towards the end of the ice cream season. And our company was always you know, interested in having kind of our own unique ice cream novelty. At the time, Mexican food's a fastest growing segment of the food industry, and a taco's the most recognizable shape. Yeah. It just seemed to make sense. I went down, talked to my boss, and. Did yeah. you have any ones that you, you came up with before that you, you gave it a go and it just didn't catch on? I have to say that the Chaco Taco was my first, and it was a home run. Yes. Since drumsticks are a childhood favorite of mine, I'm really psyched to go to Milk, where they're making updated versions of not only the drumstick, but ice cream bars, too. I'm going to step in the kitchen of Milk and learn how to make treats that are familiar and new all at the same time. Hi, welcome to Milk. Thank you. I'm Isaac Lappert. Hi, Roberto. Nice to meet you. I'm Elisa. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. So we are an ice cream parlor and bake shop. Okay. Everything is homemade here from scratch. We have ice cream bars, macaroon ice cream sandwiches, cookies, cupcakes. So you guys make all the baked goods and the ice cream here? Yes, sir. Sweet. Um, can I check it out? Yeah, of course. Come right in. Hey, what's happening? Hola. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, bien. Isaac, you too? Alex. Nice to meet you. What ice cream are we making here? Vamos a hacer de, de Oreo. Vamos a hacer los drumsticks. Cool. All right. Take it away, man. All right. It looks like some sort of cookies and cream. So this ice cream, I believe it's every staff's favorite. This is the cookies and cream bar. This is probably the best cookies and cream you'll ever taste. Oh, yeah? All right. I make a pretty good cookies and cream. We'll see. <laughs> Ahora vamos a hacer la paleta de Oreo. Uh, lo vamos a echar chocolate. Okay. Con encima le vamos a poner Garfield. Oreo. Uh, ya es... So we got a magic shell and dip it in the Oreos. Uh huh. Yeah. Lo tenemos listo. Oh yes. Everyone that works at Milk, this is their favorite this, bar. This is the bar. This is the one. Let's see. Let's see then. Está bueno, ¿verdad? No. Man, I think I might have to give it to this one. I like the inconsistency for the Oreo on the bar. It makes for like a nice texture. All these treats and pops and stuff we're making are like completely bringing me back to my childhood of like ice cream truck drivers. And in my neighborhood, the ice cream truck man, he wasn't a nice guy. He'd do things like instead of giving you 50 cents, he'd give you like five dimes and like it's kind of messed up. Just give me two quarters, for God's sakes. <laughs> and he'd do these little things that pissed off every single little kid. And then finally, all the kids in the neighborhood got together and they tipped over the ice cream truck because they were fed up with this dude. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Wow. <laughs> yeah, see. <laughs> Have you guys ever like had an experience, you know, with an ice cream truck driver, like trying to chase one down? In my neighborhood, we had about four ice cream trucks pass by in one day. Are you serious? It wasn't the same guy? No, it was not the same guy. Sí, sí, recuerdo, sí. Uh, de hecho, ahí donde vivía, uh, pasaba el, el, el camión, el que vende helados como a las nueve de la noche, y todos salíamos corriendo con mis hermanos y queremos comprar nieve. So always at 9 o'clock, you had to stay up late enough to get the ice cream. But in your wildest dreams, did you ever think you would make ice cream when you're older? Nunca pensé que iba a ser nieve, pero por la necesidad sí tuve que aprender a hacer muchas cosas. Con los drumsticks, vamos a hacer un... Yeah, yeah, let's make some drumsticks. I love drumsticks. Tenemos que hacer este, rellenar este cono 
con uh, chocolate por dentro. Le ponemos uh, nieve de, de fruit y pebos también, lo, lo, lo echamos y lo rellenamos así de esta manera para que quede así. Entonces ya lo, este lo mandamos al freezer como por 30 minutos uh -huh. y ya cuando se pone duro, entonces nosotros vamos a agarrar ahorita para poner a uh, un scoop de, de, uh -huh, de fruit y pebos. The fruit pebble ice cream is just our number one seller. Is it? Yes. So we, not only do we have fruit pebbles, but we also have fruit loops ice cream. Ooh. Esto los voy a llevar al freezer. Damn, so you guys got all this, they have all these like pops and stuff ready to go. All right, so. Okay, los dumpsters ya están listos. Ahorita ya lo podemos hacer uh, para poder avanzar. So this is Milk's twist on the drumstick. The white chocolate, it's really interesting with the fruity pebbles and the ice cream. It's, it's very delicious, man. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I learned some things. Muchas gracias. Gracias. My OG ice cream sandwich from earlier was good, but I want to check out how Cool House is updating this treat. Co-founder Natasha Case came up with a line of ice cream cookie sandwiches that draw inspiration from architecture. For example, if you love the work of I Am Pei, you might want to try the I Am Peanut Butter, a peanut butter ice cream and double chocolate cookie sandwich. You can find these ice cream sandwiches in your grocer's freezer, or you can construct your own by choosing from a variety of ice cream and cookies at one of their trucks or shops. How you doing? Hello, welcome to Cool House. Thank you. I'm Isaac. I'm Natasha. Nice to so meet you. So great to meet you. So you guys are known for your ice cream sandwiches. So yes. That's your claim to fame. That's what people come here for. It's definitely a signature product that we make. Well, I definitely am going to get the snickerdoodle cookie. OK. So uh, what flavor should I put on this? I think you want to go a little salty on that, so you could try milkshake and fries, which is vanilla bean based, but with a little bit of salt, uh, milk chocolate malt balls, and shoestring french fries. So it's like dipping a fry in a shake. OK, let's try think? that. We love sweet and savory here. Yeah, that's super good. Uh, Thank you. Can I try the red velvet? Of course. What is your background in culinary? How did you come up with all these? Uh, my background in culinary is I love to eat. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I, I did live in Italy in college, so definitely fell in love with gelato. And actually, our ice cream is run on gelato machines with ice cream style recipes. Oh, so interesting. So very, very dense, very low overrun, about 28%. Great red velvet cake in there. Thank you. It's hard to make like a moist cake yeah. inside an ice cream because Definitely. it freezes. You figured out some sort of secret <laughs> way to keep moisture inside a cake and ice cream. I feel like the snickerdoodle will go well with the red velvet. I think that's a really good call. All right, now we're going to take our edible wrapper. We're gonna wrap it around. Uh -huh. Give it a little, a little pinch down, and that is for you. Beautiful. What is up with this wrapper here? So, OK, so we created the edible wrapper, which is made of potato, and then it's uh, vegetable-based ink for two purposes. One, we launched with trucks. We started with trucks back in the day. And this is a way that there would be no waste when you were done eating your hand-scooped ice cream sandwich. You could eat the entire wrapper, which had soaked up all the drippings. And so you're not walking away, leaving any mess in the street. The other side is that you can brand it. So for catering, like for weddings, we put people's monogram on there. Does the anyone ever come in line and just order the wrapper to eat? Kids do. Do they? At, at, at a special event, a lot of kids will just want to eat like 10 mm. edible wrappers. It's yeah. actually like pretty good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to dig into this sandwich. Fantastic. Oh my god. <laughs> I went with the right decision. Well done. <laughs> so, Cool House. Yes. How did, how did the name happen? I love wordplay. And my background's in architecture. So we have first one of my favorite architects, Rem Poolhaas. It's named after him. He was very interdisciplinary, lots of beautiful colors. So that's kind of how our brand is. It, it plays with a lot of different elements. 
And then the Bauhaus movement. It was art, it was architecture, it was lifestyle. One of the founders was Mies van der Rohe. And our chocolate chip vanilla sandwich is named after Mies van der Rohe. It's called the Mies Vanilla Rohe. The point is that you use the ice cream to make these terms fun and accessible for people. So if you come to know about Rem Koolhaas or Bauhaus through the name, you feel like it's approachable and it's something that's not intimidating. Right. You know, ice cream makes everything more, just more fun and memorable. So you incorporated first into an ice cream truck. That yeah. was your first beginning, right? Yes, we started with an ice cream truck back in uh, 2009. It was a piece of shit, part of my language. <laughs> we really had no option because we bought it for $2,500. Oh, OK. Yeah, we started the whole company with like basically my personal credit card with a $5,000 limit. And we actually launched at a music festival, Coachella. So we got that. It didn't even drive. We towed it. But then we went viral after Coachella, and we, we used that, that buzz and also the excitement around the brand to upgrade things as much as we could and, and, and hit the road. So we're going to scoop some ice cream sandwiches for our ice cream truck party. Looking good. You must have done this before. I've done this a couple times. In your DNA. It's in the blood. Bam. Beauty. Do you ever do the little? I hate when employees do that. You don't like it? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> that is going to be yummy. Welcome to the Cool House ice cream truck party. And yeah, invite you to all come up and order some delicious ice cream sandwiches. Gluten-free cookies and cream. You got it. Ooh, that looks good. All right, there you go. Enjoy. Well, it's been a pleasure, and thank you so much. Yeah, nice thanks for coming. Here. Bomb Pops, Creamsicles, and Twin Pops have been flying off the trucks since before I was born. But I want to try out a popsicle with a modern spin, so I'm visiting People's Pops to get my fix. People's Pops was founded by longtime friends David Carell and Natalie Jordy. They use only local and seasonal produce to create some of New York City's most innovative flavors on a stick. Howdy, Isaac. David, welcome to People's Pops. Thank you. How long have you guys been here? Well, we're about to go into our 10th season in New York City. I started with my prom date from high school, and we were just like kids with a lemonade stand going to the end of our street. On the High Line, we're about five years in. OK, this is the first time I've ever been here. What am I standing this on? Is, we are in an above ground, abandoned railroad track here in New York City. All right, all right. Um, it kind of transformed over the years from this abandoned spot to this place where you can go on an incredible walk, have a popsicle. Yeah. I mean, you can really get lost in here. It turns into a forest. You want to try one of the popsicles? Yes, please. We have a sweet corn today. Yes, sir. Right on. What are you What are you doing? Oh, this just loosens it up, you know, gets it ready. I don't know. It's like your way of like spanking the baby, welcoming him to the real world. Yeah, everyone has their technique. There's actual like full-on corn chunks inside this. This was a controversial pop when we first made it. I see why. So and actually internally, because we were struggling to be a business. We went to the green market one day, and I remember my business partner walking back to the van with flats of corn. And I was like, what is this? What are you going <laughs> to do? We're not going to sell corn popsicles. You're crazy. And we killed it. I got a strawberry basil. You want to cheers? Cheers. Right on. All right, this is my first corn pop. Drum roll. It almost has a texture of like a corn flake, doesn't it? Yeah, the sweet corn shoots right through to the taste buds. Absolutely. This is definitely one of those like pops that you probably have a cult following for. They're like, I need people, to get my corn pop. People legit ask for the corn popsicle. You want to try another one? This one's a cantaloupe ginger. How did you get inspired for this one? Well, it's cantaloupe season, and the rules we generally play by are locally grown fruit, 250 okay. mile radius. So that's going to mean right away that there are a lot of classic flavors you might not have. R.I.P. pineapple, mango popsicles. Yeah. I, I love those. But you know what? It's not New York City. It's, it's not part of the local fruit. Right on. Right away, the cantaloupe took over. Yeah. And then the ginger kind of settles back down, and you get a nice spiciness with the sweet cantaloupe. You know, it sounds like we're making this up, but like there is a beginning, middle, and end yeah. to the flavor of these popsicles. 
We actually have a zero waste goal, and we use such a heavy fruit puree that we found that we had juice left over, which is how we came to make these shave ices. I know you're an ice cream scooper. Do you uh, want do you want to shave some ice? Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Ice shaving boot camp. Show me the technique. I've never done this. So I'm gonna make it look easy. Okay. Boom. I liked your technique, so you just kind of went. You're gonna run across it and just kind of go with it. Look at that. Hey. Now scoop it out. Okay. All right. Put it in. Make that dome, the Thunder Dome on top. Okay. Yep. Okay, what, what flavor is this? This is a lime hibiscus. Hibiscus makes it, makes it red. Um, and then uh, a little peach on top. So we're gonna have like a peach limeade Pure for peach. you today. Look at that. There it is. That's how a pro does it. Flavor mix, dig right in. How the hell did you figure out that these two comp well, these three things would go well together? Exactly. You know, we take a lot of inspiration from cocktail menus around here in New York City and Brooklyn um, and teas. And we just kind of, uh, you know, use that as a guide. And you know what? If no one wants to shave ice, sometimes I like to just throw this. It's such a weird thing getting hit by a snowball in the summer. <laughs> you want to throw him back at us? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm going to take this guy out. <laughs> what? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you a juggler? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. What? What a point. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> Summer's over. That's it. <laughs> Game over.